Hey, it's Pest Lovers. Mark here from Whole Lots. They love got Brian with me today. Hello. Uh, we are going to unbox a Ranchilio Sylvia Pro X. Set it up. We're going to get you making drinks right away. We've got one already heated up, so we can do that, right? Absolutely. And we kind of got the bee crew here today. If we go behind the scenes, we got uh, more bees, Ben and Brian. Uh, we do want your questions. We'd be more than happy to answer them during the live stream. Those guys will get them out front here to us, so ask away. If you're watching a replay, you can always use the comments. We do monitor those, and you can ask away there. Uh, what's, what do you do here, Brian? So uh, I'm knows. the tech manager, so okay. I assist with technical support. Uh, I work with the tech team at the warehouse, all sorts of fun stuff. All right. Maybe seen me in a video or two. <laughs> Just a couple. Just a couple. Uh, all right, so let's get this out of the box. We'll show you what's in it real, real quick, and we're going to make an espresso, show you how to do that with or without a scale. It's really easy. Uh, and then we're going to make another one and make a latte, right? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let's get this out of here. All we're going right. to get all strong for you right now. Ugh. Get rid of that. Nice. Why do I always get the heavy on? I, you set yourself <laughs> up, man. I don't know. All right. There we go. I'm going to lift again. Well, <laughs> show off. <laughs> so uh, we want it, we'll want we show you how to get this started up real quick. So, But what's with it, right? And yeah. then we're going to make some drinks. So I'll start tossing stuff your way. All right, sweet. Like we got our uh, filter baskets. We got a single and a double. We got a cleaning brush and a coffee scoop. Well, and there goes one of the baskets. <laughs> And the porta filter. Now, if you're familiar with, uh, say, maybe you had a, you know, a regular Ranchilio, Sylvia, little change here, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a uh, deeper porta filter. This thing's massive. This is really commercial grade. Nice thing about how deep this is is it actually can fit in those uh, 22, 23 gram baskets. So you can yeah. see that a little bit better. Not really anything to compare it next to, but trust yeah. me, it's deeper. There's always a little limit. We got the uh, little back flush guy here. We'll talk yep. more about that later. Uh, some some uh, cleaning ta cleaning. This is like a Kafiza type product. Yep. Um, yep. Puros. Um, oh, and I know. Oh, of course. Of course, the uh, you know you get your manual there, and I know there's something hiding in here. Yep. Which I like to see. Absolutely. You got the BWT. It's a best save pad filter. Uh, this uses magnesium ion exchange to soften the water. Uh, use this as directed. You will not get scale in the machine, and that's really important with dual boilers. Absolutely. Um, there are other options. We're going to talk more about this in a minute. But let's uh, let's get this guy plugged in, huh? And get some water in there. Get her heated to me. up. Um, notice that you know I'm not going to take the tape off right here on this, and there is some laser film here as well. Yep. Uh, laser uh, film keeps it nice and protected and shipping there. It doesn't always come on there, but it's nice to see it on there. You want to take that off? So we do have the water over there, right? Water. Uh, real quick, I do want to mention in the yeah. uh, reservoir oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before you start pouring the water in, uh, you got a few different lines in here. Uh, so you've got this one tube on the end here. This is a vacuum tube. This is very important to make sure that it is actually fully seated into the reservoir. If I can yeah, show, show that, that to right? you, all right. There's like a little uh, kind of T thing in there. Yep. There it there is. There you go. So that's going to insert right into that T. There's a little notched out area if you can see that on the camera there. Uh, so it slides right into place and that's what is, uh, senses that there's water in the reservoir. So if this is not actually firmly slid into place, if it's just floating around in there, the machine's going to yell at you and say, hey, fill me up. Yep. Uh, and then obviously you got two other tubes in there. One's the intake and one's the return. So just make sure everything's all nice tucked in there appropriately and then fill her up. Now we're using, now here's, we'll talk more about this later, but we are using a BWT Aqualizer, same, same company that makes the uh, best safe pad here. This is a good option if you were, you know, going through more than a reservoir in a day, because that best safe pad needs about eight to 10 hours residence time in the reservoir to actually do its thing. But both of those are gonna soften the water enough, so with magnesium again, that you don't get any scale in your machine. It's also got carbon filtration in there, so you get rid of any chlorine, that kind of thing. Tastes good for just drinking, too. And it's, yeah, great for just for drinking. And it's got a cool light in the bottom. I don't know if you saw that. It does. You know, I don't think I ever actually noticed that the last time that we filled this. <laughs> it caught me uh, off guard. We've had their penguin pictures forever, and this is just kind of the latest version. It uses the exact same filters, if you're familiar with it. And we got a couple more waters over there if we need them. 
which I'm guessing we will do, need a yep. little bit more. But we should be ready to power this guy up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and fire it on. You can see REL when we're starting up here. That's absolutely normal. Then you got the 1.06. That's going to be your uh, firmware version. And there goes the pump, and I, I heard a prime, I'm pretty sure, there. Yep. Yeah, you get that there loud, uh, hollow knocking kind of sound. There's a little bit of air in the line, but it took it in perfectly fine. So right, right now, now. It's, it's probably filling the, uh, the service boiler, right? It is a dual boiler machine? Yep, yeah. Service boiler first, and then once it's done filling the service boiler, you're going to need to run water out of the group head. I gave you a little something to help with that. There we go. But once we get this, you know, so that it's heat, heating up, we'll, we'll move over to the one we already have heated up and we'll show you how to make an espresso and a latte. Yeah. The other thing to keep in mind with uh, this machine is you'll actually hear a couple of different sounds that the pump is making. Mm -hmm. uh, key to keep in mind, you got two pumps inside this machine, one that goes strictly for the service boiler and one that goes to the uh, group. Kind of a unique setup there. Yep. But again, we will take your questions, so if you got them, you know, don't, don't leave my guys back there lonely, and they'll get them out to us. Going down, going down. It takes a while. Let's remember the size of the boilers off the top of your head? I do not remember, but it's definitely in the specs. Yeah. And if you know, you already, we're assuming maybe you already purchased the machine and you're getting it running here. Yep. So, of course, you can check those out. There you go. Okay. Now, I'm just going to press that brew switch, right? Yep. So, we get a nice flow of water out of there. And you can... You know, you probably want to rinse through some, right? Yeah, I, I good rule of thumb, if a machine doesn't tell you how much water it wants out or if it doesn't give you a set time period to flow for, always run a cup through. Mm -hmm. I know a sure. lot of the machines we use now have fill programs where you, all, you, you pretty much have to run it for at least 30 seconds before the machine's going to be happy. Yeah, exactly. But do make sure, you know, your boilers fill up. Yeah, generally speaking, if you let it run for 30 seconds, you're going to get a cup or around a cup out. So, but if you just go for that cup, it should be good. All right. So that's pretty much it, right? For the startup? That's it. Yeah. Hey, that, 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 that wasn't too bad. Feel okay. that. It's already warm. Oh, already, war already warming up. That's Fast good. heat up time on these. Yeah. All right. So let's go over here, right? Do and I, I will pull I will pull the first shot since awesome. I dialed the machine in this morning and then I'll pull another one and we can do some simultaneous brewing and steaming. I'll get the heck out of the way there. Just real quick, <laughs> any questions that we can take? Yeah, we'll oh, okay. Yeah, let's just let's just take a question. What do we got, Ben? Got a question here from Domenico. Uh, why does the Sylvia Pro and Pro X have two vibratory pumps? Are there any benefits to this? The only other machine I know that has this configuration is the Decent DE1. Mm -hmm. Why? So that's a, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't know the full reasoning behind it. Uh, I can tell you that the benefit what I know to be a benefit for it is that when you are running the group, if you need to run water out of the uh, hot water tap at the same time, uh, you're not splitting the power mm. between the two. So you're not going to lose out on that, you know, where you have it set for nine bar, 10 bar, whatever. Right. Uh, you're not, that you're not going to see a big drop in pressure when, when the other pump is running. You'll still see a slight dip just because you got some pow extra power consumption coming through, but right. Uh, it won't be as massive. Yeah, because there's some machines, like if you if it went into a refill when you're brewing, would you, you'd you see a change, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times if you were to, you know, heat exchanger machine or something specifically, you got a lot going on at once, a power consumption, and now all of a sudden you have water going through to a separate side of the circuit. It's not a normal to see almost a bar drop, so. Sure which you don't really want unless you're trying to work that into your workflow, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, all right, so one thing we did, we didn't put the portafilter in over here, which you do want to do that. You know, whenever your portafilter is not in use, you want to have it loosely snuck in there because yep. this is going to get warm. Notice over here we do have that. Um, but let me grind here. I do like a dry, nice dry portafilter. So wipe that dry. Nice. Often have a little condensation in there. Um, so I am going to grind, I'm going to grind on a uh, Eureka Mignon Libre grinder, it's a grind by weight grinder, I've got that set to 17 grams, which is a pretty good fit in the basket that comes with the machine. Now you don't have to do this, I'm going to show you how to get by if you're not weighing your coffee or weighing your espresso. But on this one it just automatically grinds right to 17 grams, then a little tear out there, see it counting up, 
Got a little dosing ring here to keep everything in the portafilter. And I nail it. Sometimes oh, wow. it does this little bump. Yeah, you know, and it so nailed it, it that it, time. It, yeah. So I'm just going to shake that down a little bit. Put a little over the edge there. Not a big deal. But I do want you to take a look here. So that's about the fill level, if we got a shot of that. Yeah. Um, for 17 grams of that. So if you didn't have a scale, what you can do is just kind of get it to that fill level. It maybe even go right to the rim, you know, maybe go 17 and a half. It's yeah. not, you know, the, the amount you use is, yeah, kind of important, it, but it's being consistent as you dial in. You know, and if you don't know how to dial in your coffee, do check out our videos on that, right? Yeah. So what I would suggest is you get it overfilled and then you just dish it out and I'm going right on the floor here because I can. Um, so you get a little dish in there. Um, then you're going to tamp it, of course. And I've got a little tamping mat here to help out with that. And you want it nice and even and level. And, you know, the, the pressure used to always be 30 pounds. You don't have to be exactly 30. It's just yeah. nice and firm, right? Yeah. I like to say uh, push through the squish. Push through the squish. Yeah. And I, once it, once it get, feels hard, that's when you need to stop. Yeah. And I, I give it a little barista polish, they call it here. I do the but, same thing. <laughs> okay. And then before I put it in, I'm just going to make sure there's any coffee around here. We want to kind of keep that out of the group. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I am, I am going to use a scale here, so I'm going to weigh this. We use 17 grams. I'm, we're using our uh, Crema Wave coffee here. I Good like stuff. that at a 1 to 2 ratio, so yeah. I want 34 grams out. Now, again, you don't have to use a scale, and you can see kind of the volume that we're going to get. I'm using an Akaya Lunar scale here. Go turn that on and tear that out. And we're going to get a shot timer up here, so I'm looking for 20 to 30 seconds for that extraction. I did dial this in earlier before you arrived, Brian, so uh, we'll see how we do here. You're good so far. And I can tell that's, that, that looks about right to me. Nice crema. Yeah, the crema wave does make, you know, if you've seen my videos, you know, I call them buckets yeah. of crema. <laughs> so I'm going to stop it. Well, there it almost looked away. So I'm 0.3 grams over. That's, that's not bad, kids. In about 24, 25 seconds, I saw it went away. I'm going to give this a little taste here. Um, I know how that I drink this a lot, so I know there's a little sweet note in it if I get it extracted right. Oh yeah, and that's that's the way I like I like that coffee. Um, now, well, if you're newer to espresso, right? What do you do if it came too fast? Well, fine it up. Fine it up. Yep. Or Dose a little Check heavier. Check your ratio. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there we go. But let's do another one. And this time, can I have you bang that out for me? Or Absolutely. Um, so we're, we'll do another one. And I'm going to ask uh, Ben to go grab us the milk out of the fridge over there so we can do a milk drink. I'll uh, point out one oh, more yeah. thing for you real quick, uh, talking about if you're using, uh, if you're not using a scale, uh, mm -hmm. trying to determine whether oh, or not yeah. you have too much in there. A good way to tell if you have too much coffee in there is if you look at the top of your puck after you've brewed, and just make sure that you don't have any evidence of like a uh, shower screen screw or the imprint from the screen on your puck. Uh, if you if it's touching your screen, mm -hmm. then you have too much coffee in there and need to reduce the amount a little bit. Great, great tip. Thanks for because people are, yeah I get asked all the time in the comments like how do I know if I'm doing too much? So let's see. I'm gonna switch sides with you, all right? Sounds good to me. And I'm gonna grab you the milk over here, and because we are in a dual boiler, we can brew and steam at the same time. So maybe I'll, maybe you prepare your pitcher and I'll get this ready. You can tell I'm us what you're that. doing there with that. And I got your glass up here. Awesome. All right, let's see. Size is this. Yeah, we can take a question, sure. Uh, I got a question here from Latte with K. How do you determine which brew temperature you should be using? Ah, so. <laughs> Trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a really good question. Um, so we're using Crema Wave, which is a medium roast, so that espresso brewing range in Fahrenheit, sorry for, for all my Celsius friends, um, is 195 to 205. Generally, what you're going to do is use your roast level to determine that. Now, you can play around and experiment with different brew temperatures and see what it does for a coffee, right? Yep. But we're using, we're at 201 right here. It's a medium roast coffee, so we're right in the middle there. If you're going to go lighter roast, you'd go hotter. Darker roast, you'd go colder. 
So I know, yeah, because we got Brian back there. Brian, there's a we have a lighter, lighter roast coffee that you like a lot. What do you brew that at? Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. But, but yeah, no, the, the Talima that we use, uh, I usually do it around two, two hundred as well. So two hundred as well, yeah. You know, anywhere between two and two o two, I, I would always say is like a yeah. solid brew temp for uh, if you're making espresso. But you can always, you know, you can play around and see what happens with the flavor when you change temperature. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go. We're gonna do this simultaneously, right? So you're waiting for me. Yep. So I'll get going here. So again, if you don't have a scale. Just look for, you know, just a fill to the rim and then dish a little bit. So you just got a little space in there, and that's going to be just about right. And as we saw when Brian took that out and showed you, you know, we had no impression of shower screen um, or any of those, like, screw heads or anything like that. Yep. So I'm going oh, to have to do it like this because I don't want to get in front of stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to cheat. You know, these do, I do like that the porta filters have a little angle to them. You can see how that... Um, Angles it so it makes it a little easier to tamp if you're going to do it like I'm yeah. doing it right here. A lot of porta filters, you know, they'd be straight handled out, so you got to kind of hold it up like this and tamp it. Yeah, I, I love angled porta filters. All right, I'll get that on there. Charge a little bit you more. Go. And Good I'll just to point out. Run 25. I'm not going to weigh this time. You don't have to. Again, it's kind of preferred if you want consistency. I will point out this is. Uh, not an insulated steam wand, mm -hmm. so it's not no burn. So make sure you use your little uh, rubber grip there. Yeah. How you doing there, buddy? Ah, uh, you oh, know, oh, I've done that. better. So I'll give you so, that. I'm gonna remember to uh, knock out my porta filter here. It'll be all right, I guess. I've done better foaming in my life. Okay. No, that's going to be good. Yeah, you know, as we always say, you know, art or not, it's still going to taste great. Absolutely. All right. Where's my camera? Where yeah, you got it. There you go. All right. So we, got, we will take your questions, so bring those in. Got more. You got more? Okay. Got a couple questions yeah. here from oh. Soul. <laughs> Just a little too much. I'm going to let you have a drink of your creation there. A couple right. questions here from Soul. They would like to know, is it really expensive to add an insulated steam wand like some of the competitors have? They're also curious whether the Rocket Apartamento TCA or the Silvia uh, Ranchilio, or Ranchilio Silvia Pro X, which one they might want to go for. Um, so I'll let you take the steam on question. Is that a possibility? Uh, so to add a no burn onto there, uh, you just need to have a lance or wand that will fit the uh, valve. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know off the top of my head which ones will or will not fit, uh, but I know that it, it is something that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, which Lance you get can kind of depend on the price there. You know, forty-five dollars to you know up to a hundred dollars for some wands. Uh, but it's the, you can't just shove a no-burn tube in there. There's a lot of seals and stuff that go inside there to make sure that it stays inside the Teflon tube that's inside there. Um, and then obviously when you get to your higher price ones, a hundred plus dollars, yeah. you're looking at the vacuum sealed lances. And again, okay. you, you can. You just got to make sure that you get one that fits the thread size of the actual valve. Okay. And let's see, the other one was like, uh, compare the TCA a little bit? Yeah, okay. Well, we did do a, a live stream a, f a few days ago on the TCA. Um, I mean, I guess the big difference here, I mean, we're dual boiler here, right? Yeah. Um, the TCA kind of runs in, you can use a lever to change temperature ranges. It's, it's a heat exchange machine. Mm -hmm. um, so you can still brew and steam at the same time, but it's a little more, you know, like, uh, I, I think it's four temperature ranges on the TCA. Right. Um, so use the, the lever to kind of set which range you want to be in. Yeah. And I think it's going to kind of cover that 195 to 205 or maybe a little better. I mean, one thing that's different with that is you're, you know, because it is a heat exchange machine, when you set the, your steam pressure is determined by, you know, what you're using for a brew, uh, yeah. brew temperature really. So if you go in a hotter brew temperature, you'll have more steam. Yeah. Um, and you can always do that with that machine. and you know, do a little flush to bring it down if you like the extra steam pressure. Mm 
but want to go for a lower brew temperature. So that's a that's a technique with that. Yeah. Um, I think you know this this machine is going to heat up faster than the Apartmento. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, TCA. A a big part of uh, the heat up with these machines is that unlike on a E61 group head for that you find on TCA is this boiler for the uh, group is right over the group. Yeah. So that's why you're gonna get a much faster heat up at the group and you're also gonna get a much more accurate reading on the PID uh, because you don't have that delta between the brew boiler or heat exchanger and the group head, you have your temperature right over it there. So what the probe is reading is only a couple inches away in the same vessel. Yeah. So, so let's go through, um, if, if, any other questions? Okay. Well, shoot, I do want to go over the functions that are available here uh, through the display, but let's take that question. Well, we've got one that's sort of similar to what you were just talking about here. Uh, Latte with K wants to know just a little bit more about how this compares to other E61 group machines. Okay, so, well, yeah, so the key thing to keep in mind is this is not an E61 group machine. So mm -hmm. uh, you're kind of comparing apples to oranges. Uh, the style of this group head is electric valve, so you have a three-way solenoid, this opening and closing to allow the water to flow, unlike an E61 where you have a manual three-way valve activated by your, your hand on the lever. Mm -hmm. um, the big difference is those E61 machines use a thermal siphon system to bring that group up to temperature and maintain a temperature. Uh, whereas, like I just said, with this one, the temperature is based just on the boiler being right on top of it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Or I'll hit. We've also got a question okay. from Pete's Coffee and Ex Espresso. Um, is the group head here ca uh, compatible with typical E61 porta filters, or is this proprietary? Uh, this is. It's the same. The the same wing design. I'm, I'm always uh, skeptical to say what will and will not work because we don't always know everything, but looks like we have some other uh, Let me see if I got one here. Of the... uh, these being a deeper nope. design, that's probably going to be one of the most uh, common things that you'll run into, whereas you know maybe a bottomless might be able to fit that would work on an E61, but here, uh, but because this is deeper. Try that E61. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out. Science. So hey. it fits. The only thing you want to know is if it seals properly. That would be, you know, right. you'd want to throw a blind basket in there and make sure that when you put it under pressure, you're not getting anything lost in there. Uh, because there can be subtle differences to like the design up at the actual edge here that can create it, cause it not to actually seal properly on the group gasket. There we go. All right, let's go, uh, I'm gonna go over, we'll, we'll take a look at the functions here that you have available. Um, one of the things I do like about this machine, it's pretty, really easy to access those. And I did, you know, I did a uh, really in-depth review of this a while ago, yeah. uh, but went through this. It was one of the things that really struck me at first. So number one, if you want to change your brew temperature, it's literally just change the number right here. You don't have to do anything else. And then in most cases, I believe that it just flashes till it actually reaches that temperature. But then if you go in and press and hold, which is pretty typical on a lot of uh, these machines and you get into these guys and then you're going to go through and what you, you, I'll just take you run you through here and then we'll talk about what each one is about so T2 that's going to be your let me get back to T2 here so you select it with a brew switch and then you can change your temperature so T2 that's the steam boiler or service mm -hmm. boiler now one thing about this so once you get the temp once you get what you want set then you confirm it and then you're back out yeah. So you do have to go into each thing individually, but I'll run through these real quick here and just talk about what they are. So, okay, so we got T2, then we got F01, that's the, for uh, an automatic back flush. F02 is automatic wake up time after a set number of hours. Three is how you drain the coffee boiler. Yep. You like that? Three four. and four are my favorite. It's steam boiler draining on four. Automatic shutdown is on F05. We'll continue here. Um, and then six is Fahrenheit and Celsius. So again, you'd go in and select that and you can change to Celsius if you like. But we're gonna leave it in Fahrenheit. I'm gonna go down, confirm that. 
Um, then F07 is selecting the voltage. And I'm honestly, you know, we use 110 here, so I just always leave it at 110, but you can also select 230. I'm not quite sure, you know, maybe that's just for Europe. Yeah, that that's a, uh, don't, you don't need to do that. Yeah, so you don't, you don't, don't have any reason to do that. Uh, <laughs> this machine, the machine doesn't come set up for it. So changing that setting is not gonna make this machine magically work on 230. There's so that seven and then F08. Um, you select that, and that's a soft pre-infusion. So you can go up to uh, six seconds with that. Um, I'll, I'll show you what that does, so I'm going to confirm that. So now when you hit the brew switch, it's just going to allow some water to come out of the boiler, as you can see right here, and then start after that number of seconds. So if you want to do that soft pre-infusion, um, you can do that. Um, oh, we were going to talk just a, real quick again about the water quality. You know, really important, right? Yeah. And we talked about the, uh, the it does come with a BWT Best Safe pad filter. Again, that's, a, you know, if you're going to go through more than a reservoir in a day, not the best option. No. Because you want to, like, fill the machine at night, use it the next day in order for it to do its thing. Um, the other option is, you know, like the, the uh, pitchers that we were showing, BWT's Aqualizer. This is the newest version right here, which, you know, uses that, that uh, ion exchange technology mm -hmm. uses magnesium instead of sodium, which is common in softening, but magnesium is a better flavor extractor. It also has the activated carbon. So this, you can fill the pitcher, and within a couple minutes, you know, you're ready to pour out and fill up. Just that's like that's the nice thing about it, yeah. too, is that I have a Brita at home that when I fill it up, it takes forever to go through. But these filter really quickly for the amount of uh, work they're doing to your water there. And I get asked about, you know, the Britas all the time, and as far as I know, they really don't do softening. No. So you need to, you still need to treat your water to reduce the calcium, if, especially if you live in a hard water area. Right. Because um, the most common cause of problems in espresso machines is? Scale. Scale buildup. Um, okay, uh, make another check for any questions? Sure. Absolutely. Um, got a couple here from Latte with K. Curious mm -hmm. about what basic maintenance for this machine looks like and how the Pro X is different from the Sylvia M. Okay, basic maintenance. Basic maintenance. I guess I'll throw you this, right? <laughs> Not a very good throw. Not a very good catcher, apparently. <laughs> and then, and then it, comes with, it comes with some of these, these little tablets here, right? So yep. Uh, yep. what will we do with that? All right, so the tablets are nice because they're pre-portioned for you. You can obviously use uh, Kafiza. Made by the same company as those tablets. Yep, uh, and this is just a powder form, and you just use a scoop. Mm -hmm. To uh, not the coffee scoop, that's way too much. You know, we got the little, uh, yeah, the little fun little scoops brush from Ernex also. Yep, just like a little teaspoon there. Um, instructions may say to do two scoops. I do one scoop, I do it on a regular basis, so I'm not horribly worried about it. Um, mm -hmm. And the machine does have an automatic cycle for that, that which is under F01. Yep. We're yeah. doing that. I mean, we won't demo that right now, but just kind of go through what you would do. Yeah. So, what you would do is, uh, you take this blind disc that you have in here. There it is. Found you. <laughs> and that just goes right at the bottom there. Just make sure it's covering up all the holes. And then you would put your cleaner on top of that, lock your port filter into place, and then you run through the cleaning cycle. Yeah, so and that does it automatically. You go to F01 and. Yeah, and, and, and that, that's that. really nice. You don't even have to think about it, and it just rolls right through it for you, which is very, really convenient. Um, you know, on top of that, just uh, regularly checking your group gasket, making sure that it's clean. Uh, I always like you give it when a you're scrub. yeah, <laughs> when you're uh, done with the back flush, and you have that uh, sudsy water inside the porta filter. I like to just take the brush, get it nice and soapy, and go in there and just clean it out real quick. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to prolong the life of that gasket. Um, the other thing that I really like about this machine is those uh, F3, F4. Uh, functions inside there uh, to automatically flush the boilers. Uh, you know me, I'm a <laughs> huge supporter of doing the boiler refreshes. So uh, having the ability to go in there and quickly press a button to make it purge each of the boilers independently is phenomenal. I mean, it's, it, and that's kind of important that you, you take some water out of the boiler that's generating your steam, the service boiler, on a regular basis because over time, if you're only taking steam out of it, the minerals are going to build up in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, and, you know, even with your treated water, you still have to have some minerals in there. And, right. uh, you know, they may they be won't. better minerals, uh, but they can still build up and cause restrictions and things like that. Yeah. So doing that flush, especially, 
you know, if you don't use the steam as often or if you don't use hot water out of it, um, you know, if you make an Americano every day, boiler refresh for the service boiler isn't quite so necessary, but it's good practice to follow anyways. Oh, and let's just, uh, we didn't talk about that either because you can, if you don't, if you don't want the steam boiler on, you can just hit this switch. Yeah. Um, and then it remembers that state. So when you turn the machine back on, it, the, right now the, the steam boiler would not come on. Um, and if you do hit the switch and it isn't already up to temperature, the light right here will flash until it is. Mm -hmm. If you want to get hot water out of the machine, it's that little button right there. There's your hot water. Now you do have to, of course, have the steam boiler operating in order to get hot water out of the machine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, one thing yeah. I'll say real quick about the hot water is uh, there is a restrictor at the solenoid. Mm -hmm. So you saw uh, how that's not like gushing out yeah. like you see on some of the... Yeah, a lot uh, of machines. Heated, like, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's nice that they added that restrictor in there. It brings down the temperature a little bit and has it a little bit more controlled. Well, I do have people ask from time to time, hey, it looks like it's restricted. Yes, intentionally, yeah. so. Yeah, because um, some machines really blast it out, don't they? They, yeah. they do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, the other question, I believe, was the uh, oh. difference between the Sylvia Pro and the oh, Sylvia... regular Sylvia, yeah. M, yeah. Yeah. M, is that what the question? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, another uh, sort of apples to oranges type deal uh, mm -hmm. is that the Sylvia M is a single boiler machine. So it's, uh, you, you have one function at a time. You can either be brewing or you can be steaming and you have to switch between the two. Whereas with the Pro X, you have two boilers so you can be doing both at the same time. Yeah, and no PID on the uh, Sylvia. Yeah. Lots of people mod them. I, I yeah, hear yep, a lot of people <laughs> they mod do. them. Yeah, they absolutely they, do. They do, but uh, this is PID out of the box. Yep. I like that. All right, we'll take one more check. Yeah, um, while we're on the subject of basic maintenance, Colby would like to know how often uh, should you be flushing your machine if you make two to six coffees per day? I know what you do. Back flushing, I'm assuming? Uh, I do, what I do is I do a water only back flush every day that I use the machine. And then I will do a chemical bath, you know, at least once a month. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're do, you know, if you two go beyond, yeah. yeah. If, if you do, if you go beyond doing those two to six shots a day, if uh, all of a sudden you have, you know, family in town and you guys are cranking out, you know, two dozen drinks a day or something like that. And you may yeah. want to do, do a, a more couple often. extra, but yeah. You know, yeah, for, for that kind of usage, water only once a day, you're doing better than most people. Uh, water only once not a week, me. maybe, if you're doing two a day? I mean, yeah. that would you yeah, be if okay you, with that. Yeah, if you do want water only once a week, then you're definitely doing better than a lot of people still, too. Yeah, awesome. All right, take one more check, because we're almost out of time. Yes, uh, so we have two more questions here. Um, one from AJG68. Oh. Um, you mentioned the pre-infusion capability. Do you recommend using that always or maybe depending on what roast type you are brewing with? Um, so, I mean, there's a couple different reasons to do it and it's a, it's a soft pre-infusion. Um, so it just, it just releases water from the boiler onto the coffee. Um, so if I'm doing a really, I, I think it's helpful, for, well, for a couple things. Mm -hmm. Number one, it can help swell the coffee a little bit. Um, so it might reduce your chances of channeling. So I might use just a short bit of that on just about any coffee, really. But if I were doing, you know, a really fresh from roast coffee, yeah. um, I, I, I like, you know, I'd probably give it all it can take, right? Because it helps the CO2. You know, yeah. if you've ever done a pour over and see how the, the bloom, bubbles, how the bloom, <sighs> yeah, is you want to get some of that out of the coffee before you start, you know, full pressure brewing through it, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. it definitely helps a lot with uh, something that's like right off the roast, uh, you know, within yeah. a couple days of roast giving it that extra bloom time yeah. really helps it mature. All right. One more? Yeah, one more, sure. One more question here from uh, Gergert. Uh, can you update the firmware on this machine? Theirs is at 1.06, but I think ours booted up at 1.07. And are there any sort of release notes anywhere that sort of let you know what's different about the firmwares? Hmm. Uh, we can reach out to Ranchilio and get that information. Uh, I am not sure what the differences are. Uh, updating the firmware is not something that we currently do, uh, but... And we were at 106, yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah, straight out of the box, so. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure when uh, 107 came out. I'm not sure 
what the differences are. We could certainly look into that for you if you want to uh, reach out to us, give us a call or submit a support ticket. I'm happy to reach out and uh, get some more details on that for you. All right. All right. Well, let's, let's wrap up. Brian, thanks so much. And yeah. Brian and Ben back there, thanks so much. And of course, thanks you guys for, for joining us, whether you, uh, you know, are with us live or you're watching us on a replay. Again, if you have more questions, um, reach out. You can do that in the comments um, or you go to the website, do a support ticket, or you get a coffee cast. So you get a, you get a free one-on-one -on -one session with pretty much any product that we carry. Uh, with somebody like Brian, or you have a bunch of other folks that, that do that here as well, coffee experts that can take you through different products. Yeah, blast. All right. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you back here soon uh, for more of the best of everything coffee. Take care.